Hello everyone, this is Carly from Carly's Creative Clay. Sorry about that, it turns out my husband forgot to unmute. He's my technical person Button for all this. To the camera doesn't Sorry. Sorry. Right, so let's start this again a little bit late. Um, right, my bare door sign. Right, what I was saying is I have a number of these plaques in my shop where um, you can order a small one on commission they're 10 pounds this is a bear on a toilet I've done penguins on a toilet I did a, a commission this week which was a penguin with the word lavy with two V's and it was a bright pink background and it was really pretty um, I've got signs where they're a penguin in the bath with a bath hat and bubbles and name signs and all sorts of things like that um all 10 pounds i do do bigger signs which are a bit more but if you're interested look in my etsy shop um or message me about commission work on my etsy shop or anywhere that you see my shop um so yeah 10 pounds i put him to one side right we're gonna have a bit of a busy one because what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be making canes these are the two pictures I've made of the canes I'm gonna make now what a cane is is where you make a thick design and you then shrink the clay down by pushing and pulling it up you'll see I'm gonna do it all on camera and the image goes all the way along the whole stick like um, if you've ever been to the beach and got rock sweets where it's got the name of the beach all the way through the stick or a picture of a panda it's the same thing you can do this with clay so the two types of canes I'm going to do is a picture cane of a butterfly and a kaleidoscope cane so what you need to do as your first stage for creating your cane is you imagine the whole thing and you're going to bring down the image to the smallest non-repeated part it usually forms a triangle because that's the best thing to tessellate in with um, you draw, you get yourself some paper cut it to size and use that as your template to draw it's I find it better because I make bigger canes to draw to scale so as you can see this one is half the size of the um, kaleidoscope because I'm going to need less of the butterfly cane then it's a lot more of a simple job to try to translate that into the clay okay so also get your colouring pencils out because it's easier to make sure you've got colours that you want going together on the drawing than it is to do it black and white and just think I'll imagine it and do it as I go along and then work out that you've got the wrong order so yes they're my templates so I put them to one side now what I've done already is I've mixed up a whole lot of Skinner Blend long thin logs they call these it is the same idea as a cane because the image is going all the way through it which is this fade from dark red to a light pink but these are going to be used in the spaces so I've done a red one that's dark red a red one that's light red the medium brown I've mixed up a medium brown and then blended it into ochre by the way the dark red if you're wanting to copy this exact is Bordeaux 23 I use Fimo professional always and the medium red is Carmin 29 and both of them were blended in with white ochre is number 17 quick note on FIMO professional ochre it is always hard and dry I'm going to do a video 
on how to get it from dry and crumbly into soft and workable. It is the only colour that, well, maybe terracotta also comes very dry. But your clay will dry out over time. What happens is what keeps it soft and pliable is there's something called a plasticizer in it. And it can leach through and evaporate. It doesn't all go because it takes a very long time for that to happen. But you can moisten it back up. Have you covered how to do a skin blend on previous episodes? I've covered how to do a skin blend on pretty much every other episode because I use it a lot. And I am... Hi everyone. Hi Arty Hearty Life. It's lovely to see you. Um, I am going to cover how to do a very large Skinner blend. I am going to mix up that huge wedge of colour. So all the other ones I've done so far were for charms and they were tiny little manageable small bits of clay. We're going to mix up what my dad liked to term duffer. Huge. You don't have to mix up lots of little ones and stack them up. You can go to town and make huge ones. Right, but I'm just showing you the colours I've already made up and what I've done. Right, I've mixed up another dark red into a pinkish tone. That is going to be for the dark red in the cubes of that. I'm going to use some of that for the alternate red. I have also, sorry about all the rustling, it's store your clay under grease proof paper, then it don't get coated in dust. This brown is what I'm going to use for that leaf there. This is the standard chocolate brown into white. That I think was a mixture of Bordeaux into Heather. I can't remember what number Heather is and I'll have to dig it out. But it's the Heather colour, the very light pink. This is Terracotta into Ochre, which I'm going to use for these petals of a flower. The middle bit is going to be an X, the Fermo FX Gold. Then... The last bit I've already mixed up. Oh, no, there's two more bits I've already mixed up, sorry. Let's get that. Let's get that. Oh, yeah, I've miscounted. There's a few, several bits I've mixed up already. So I've half killed myself over the week doing this little lot. Right. I have done... This was white with a pinch of brown and a pinch of black to make a mushroomy colour. And then I added more white for that side and left this side a bit darker. And that is going to be for that little patch there. The This has been my favourite mix. I love it. It's copper into gold. And that's what I'm going to use for the sun up in the top corner. I've mixed up a load of background cream colour, which was a pinch of ochre in with a whole lot of white. And that makes a cream. And I've done a white stick and covered with a sheet of black to make what we call a bullseye cane. I will be showing this later. That really is, isn't it? I'm going to have to use this a whole lot more. I think this is... I'm going to, you're going to see it in my work. Especially over the next few months. Before I get bored with it. I will be showing how to make a bullseye cane. In a bit. But I'm going to make the Arty one where Arty it's... Says that's a licorice all sort. It is. There are standard terms for cane work. And... It's not, half of them aren't the stuff I would call, but it means something because there is a whole huge amount of people in the polymer clay world where all they do is make canes for things, nothing else. And there are some exceptionally skilled ones. 
I am going to put a link under this to Tiny Pandora. I said I would in a previous film and I didn't and this time I'm going to. I'll make sure of it. But um, she's way superior to me in cane work. But I will show you. I have had a few goes at it and had some success. But yes, there are standard base canes that are used a lot. There is the bullseye cane is where you do a stick of colour and wrap more colours around it to make like a bullseye so self-explanatory a fade log this is a primary thing that are used in most complex canes where it's faded from one colour to the other top to bottom going across the other standard thing you use is something called a jelly roll what that is is where instead of having the fade going top to bottom it's a circle and it goes from the middle out and i will be showing you how to make them now a lot of the very very advanced um, cane makers will say to you make your skin a blend chop it in half make your logs with some of it and then roll it into the jelly roll from a flat sheet I've had success by just making up a lot of logs and then turning a log into a jelly roll so I'll show you how I do that now the other key bit to making canes is having sheets of a contrasting colour most often it's black like this on either the finished setting on your pasta machine on the next one up you can do it with a rolling pin but look how thin that is very very thin so it is harder to manage rolling out and scraping with a tissue blade and I'm going to need a lot of it because what this is for this is going to be all the lines that you have drawn in black that are the dividing lines like you would have in a picture and you need it kind of thin oh one last blend that I forgot I made up this is a gold into a yellow um, I think this is true yellow and I put it into a semicircle so it was a log with the colour like that and what I did was I literally just pushed the edges down like that to make it into a semicircle. Now what they're going to be are the little bits right next to the butterfly. Other than that I mixed, I did say I mixed up some background, yes. If I seem foggy it's because I'm really foggy. This week I have come up in a rash, I hope you can't see it on camera and it's driving me nuts and making me very tired but ho-hum still press on right so the first thing to do is to put all this lot out of the way safe and make up the last one of these logs which is that brown cream fade that i've got on the side there so i will show you how to mix up a huge skinner blend I don't want to squash these with my pasta machine and I have done that before and it's really annoying again never throw clay away you can always use it for other things even if it's not right for what you're doing no more right Skinner blend like I say on every other video this is my rule the light side to the left always forever that is your mantra because if you put it through that way and then you put it through that way all the brown the darker brown clay that's on your roller up that side is going to go onto the light bit and you won't have your control color spread it's actually a symptom of chronic fatigue syndrome and it can get really bad where you literally start to forget english and yeah right when you're making 
a big Skinner blend. First little trick that you don't have to do on the little ones. Can you see there is a really, it's about, what are we? Yeah, it's about a centimetre thick. Trying to get the rollers to catch that big flat edge is gonna be hard. So I pinch the leading edge into a little point. Like so. Charlie Star says hi everyone. Hi Charlie, welcome, welcome. You haven't missed much. I just showed the ones I've already done and we're getting started on this. So you want that to be quite a straight edge because your pasta machine will accentuate any bulges. It's not that critical, but it's just a little easier. So there we go. Get that and push that into the start of the roller. So it's all connected and engaged. Now, I've showed you this on previous videos, but pulling up like that is difficult. So what I do is I push down on my pasta machine. I've got this on the thickest setting possible. You can thin it down once we've done our first roll. And then I bring the handle from that bottom position back up and then keep just pushing down rather than doing the pull up stroke because it's easier on your hands. Huge hugs. Huge hugs. Right. This first one is always a bit of an arm work, so I've literally, you can see why I'm so knackered making up the others. Now, since I put some of it through, underneath, because it's only got a drop of about that much, the clay is consultina in. So what I do is I just go under and I'll show you. I'm just pulling it and flipping it out flat so that it don't start to stack up and stick to itself because it can be hard to unstick it especially if you're on a thinner setting so I tend to say three downward pulls and then go under and flip now I will show you how to clean a standard pasta machine on another video by the way I've zoomed the camera now so you right yeah thank you so what you got it's a huge long bit of clay now it looks all cracked up the top that is absolutely fine what we're going to do is we're going to fold it in half top to bottom now we've got to make sure that we line up the colors in the fade that we want so getting your line up first is really good. So what I'm doing is I'm leaving a bit of that beige uncovered by dark brown. And on the other side, there is some dark brown uncovered by beige. Like that. And then you'll see the colours are mixing at different proportions along that diagonal and you roll it through a few times and that will make a fade of different colour along that line. So I fold, especially the big ones, I fold it into two because what that, having a thick bit of clay like that, what that allows you to do is then get your hands and make sure, press along the sides start to shrink it because we're going to need to shrink it down to that thick so keeping it under control when you're putting it through is important now you saw i did that that pushed the top bit but you'll see it's sort of let's see can i show you whoop it's a curve so you need to flip it over to make sure that the bottom bit is as equally pushed in so then that's flat again you can put it on its side and do that but you've got to make sure you try not to buckle the sides and get it to fold in on itself in the middle or your fade won't be right so we're back 
to where you want to put it through again pinch a point in the end and we go for again lightest to the left make sure the clay is fully connected in Oop. over that way one two three go under pull the clay out towards you so that it's not folding one two they do do desk clamps for your machine but i find they never hold properly it's easier just to hold it down now you see why i didn't do the others all on screen because this would make the most boring hours worth of filming ever of me just making up lots of these logs and it is on the difficult side for your arms you really do need to be able to take lots of breaks right line it this line up is slightly different to the last one because you've got it exactly where you want your fade to be you've just got to line up the edge so it's easier well thank you I it's luck more than judgment I don't write a script I just sit here and waffle and the interesting thing about me when I get tired the more tired I get the more I actually just waffle on and that's useful for a live stream isn't it so I can wind up being a zombie and still be able to talk it might not make much sense but it's um, interesting nonetheless I mean I think already I'm going to be bedridden tomorrow I can feel I'm not in a good place right now but that's all right I've got a comfy bed um do remember next Wednesday that's all right if it starts to wonk out sideways because we'll just line it back up afterwards it can be harder the smaller the clay you work with but when you're doing a big chunk like this it's actually interesting how much more forgiving it is for your fold lines and for it doing weird things like going sideways <laughs> oh I bet you before I get to an old lady because I'm going to do this for the rest of my life hopefully I'll have a stream where I listen to it back and I'll be making absolutely does no sense at all like nope it does look like it's cracking it's because it's a large block going through a pasta machine don't worry I promise you that looked worse and it looks great hi welcome welcome i hear you had a very bad week 4d i'm sorry i hope you'll start to feel better soon it seems to be the season all my lovely friends are down unwell i'm out in a rash my brother-in-law's got a cold stroke flu winter time in the uk the joy of it if i could i would travel to warmer climates but i'm i'm a complete wuss when it's really hot i remember i went on holiday once and you could see the air shimmer like that kind of hot nope i was ill i i saw the hotel that week i think it was too much i don't get how people live in it i know you acclimatize they say you do but i think i might actually die before then right it seems like a few passes through some people say 
that to get a really smooth blend you need like 30 to 40 passes through your pasta machine. Have you heard those motorised pasta machines? More to the point, your neighbours 10 streets down. They are worse than a lawnmower. Oh yes you can. They cost half your soul on your first born child. But you could also just attach a drill motor to they the also car. even a drill. It's not a quiet process. Also, you then have to contend. Sorry, you then have to contend with watching your fingers whenever you're operating it because it's automatic. That's less of a problem because the gap is so thin. But what it means is you can't use your pasta machine past three o'clock in the afternoon without your neighbours pulling a frowny face. Especially if you've got ones with little kids or dogs that like to bark at things with motors. So pretty. I love this middle stage. Can you see you end up with the clay sort of dappling through? It looks scruffy as all heck at the moment and don't worry at all. I remember the first time I did this I got to this stage and it all looked cracked and it all looked scruffy. I was like I'd done something wrong and the thing is most of the tutorials I saw online about a Skinner blend what they did was they got the triangle they put it through once and then they said and you don't want to watch me putting it all through the machine 30 times plus so I'll come back with my Skinner blend ready. Perry Hedgehog says, I said it was streaky, and Perry Hedgehog says, like bacon. Mm, like bacon. Says, it really does look like artisan chocolate, and Charlie Star says it looks cool. It does, thank you. Yep, I'm here to tell you brown clay does not taste as good as chocolate. Yes, I have found a bit of brown clay and thought it was a bit of chocolate that I dropped. It has happened. It actually tastes of nothing. It really, it, it's... And it's not poisonous. I mean, they don't say, you know, it's a part of your food groups, but it won't do nothing to you. Um, so yeah, people end up, oh, you really are going sideways and you're catching this. So I'm just pushing it over slightly. If this was a really thin bit, that might have really caused me problems up that end luckily a thick bit you can just give it a little shove it goes through it looks a bit scruffy there what you're gonna do it's actually not that gross it literally tastes of nothing oh look at that can you how pretty is that that looks like the red spot on mars it does I must not stop and keep using that for something else. I'm never going to get a Skinner blend if I allow myself to do that. Right. So, those scruffy edges, what you'll find when you shrink it down and you start pushing in, you see, they all just smudge away at the end. Don't even need to cut them off unless you really don't need the extra clay they all smudge up tidily the joy of clay it's a very forgiving medium and will let you fix so many problems just really simply yes right I think this is going to need about two more goes through Charlie starts says what are the drawings for under the Oh, right. This now is. It looks like wood. Yeah, it does. This is what we're going to be making. They're going to be canes. This is going to be a kaleidoscope one. So, what I'll do is we'll make that and we'll start tessellating it up along that edge. And as you go around, you'll, you'll see. If it turns out like I plan, that looks just sort of like some odd lines, but it's going to look like a stained glass window. Hearty, hearty the other one is a picture one. Of a butterfly. Your word for it about the flavour. You are now my official authority on polymer clay flavours. 
Um, Seriously to God. Very hedgehog. I'm not even kidding. Bit of clay. You see this? Charlie Stark said, <laughs> oh wow. Although that was before you ate. It doesn't harm you. It isn't poisonous. It doesn't even taste of anything. The meds I take every day taste worse than that. There are myths knocking around. The thing is, what you'll see on the pack, see that little, let's see, which camera, this one. Can you see there? Oh, there you go, AP. Evil Monkey Spaz says, hello, I'm here. Hi. That little AP, that means it's child safe. Yeah? You can't get a child safe label without it being safe to eat some. That's just, that's the end result of it. You, It's a safety standard. Now, unbranded polymer clay, who the hell knows what they cut that with? I would never ever, not only would I not eat it, I pretty much would not use it because usually it's some little factory doing making the mix up but it's got they can cut things in it to make the mix go further that's cheaper but okay, isn't that safe i never knew about the ap thing. oh yeah if you have a look around it's called it's the art summit or other uh, uh, uh. Can people get their clay through you? No, but I can tell you where I get it. What I did once I decided to go and start selling, I thought the first thing I'm going to need to do is find the cheapest seller of clay in this country. So I Google searched for about three weeks. It was the boringest thing in the universe. And I came up with this little doll's house shop. Oh, need a drink, sorry. Charlie's still sick of question. <clears throat> they focus on doll's house miniatures. I'll put a link in the description. They're called Tumdee, T-U-M-D-E-E. -E. Now the guy who owns the place is called Robert Duckett. And he is an awesome guy. He's got my sense of customer service he if you go on his website a big bar like that is i can't remember it's 7.99 something like that what i did very early on i got in touch with him and said i'm going to be ordering a whole lot of clay over my years what can we do as a special offer for someone who's going to use a lot and he goes sounds brilliant we chatted a lot we made friends and he does that bar size that's the one he does that bar size for 720 and i was like that's that's awesome that's even cheaper than the cheapest in the country and i started to get talk about it on my clay sites and I got a lot of interest from various clay groups that I'm on so I went back to them and I said I got you some people who use polymer clay as much as I do are they able to have the same discount and he says yes if you email instead of placing the order through the online because he can't change the prices if you email him the order he will do a discount rate. He does the FIMO soft, he does the small blocks. I think they're 120 for the little ones outside. But he is an awesome guy. It's free postage over 25 pound order, which is easy. That's like three or four bars. And I think he now sells more polymer clay than most other stuff because everyone else that I talk to about it, you won't find it cheaper. It's just that's the case. I'm not getting a commission. I never do get a commission. I just don't like people to be 
um, conned is the honest word. I went into WH Smith's once and I'm not kidding, I saw that bar that I get for 7.20 for 25 pounds. That's a heck of a markup, huge. Now if I was paying 25 pounds for every bar of clay, A, I wouldn't be able to do this. I, I'd need to take a loan out just to make something each week. It was crazy. At 7.20, that's a very different beast. That's all I'm saying. And you you really, really, he's a great guy to talk to. Uh, 4D says, thanks to you, I get play from him too. Yeah, he... I don't know how he feels about it. I'm sure he's happy about the fact that he started out, he had one set of shelves, a couple of clay bits on it. He must have, it was all, his doll's house miniatures are awesome. And that's what he focused on. He went, he goes around the world selling them. Charlie Star says, WH Smith prices, that's crazy. I know, 25 pounds. Can you imagine what I'd have to charge? It would, yeah. But there are people out there paying it. There are people who actually have an Etsy shop or sell online like I do, and they haven't sourced their clay. That's why when I started going online and going, anyone interested in a really good seller of clay that charges this? Everyone went, me, I do. The list was huge and I just, it got to the point where I just said to Robert, you're going on, you're on Facebook. I'm going to join you in all the groups that I'm in and you can deal with them because I ain't being paid. As my brother-in-law puts it, your problem. And he was like, that's a, that's a nice problem to have. Um, I think he ran out of stock pretty quick that week. <laughs> and, and yeah, now I see his name all over the British Polymer Clay Guild, the International Polymer Clay Guild, Polymer Clay UK, and on and on and on. Right, that looks like an all right fade. Because we're going to bring it down into a cane, these slight streaks that you can see, they won't notice in the end because we're going to shrink it all down. If you're doing a very small bit and it's a really obvious thing like a background you'd need to run it through a few more times just to get it so it's completely unstreaky and it will go like that but I'm lazy lazy I've just done all that press for time press for time that's a nicer way of putting it right I'm just getting my pasta machine out of the way because I need that space now, as a side note, I have learned over the years that the things you say to yourself without thinking, your brain really listens to that and takes it on board. So even if you don't believe you're stupid, if you call yourself stupid enough, your subconscious will start to think that's a thing. You don't want it use kind language picture yourself as your best friend would you talk to your best mate like that that's the question you've got to be your best mate and it's habit forming you get into the habit of saying things you get into the habit of you can also have a good friendship turn into a poisonous relationship just because you got into the habit of cuss banter between you it's interesting the human brain really is it works a whole lot on the subconscious that you haven't really you've got no fault that you can put in it's doing it on its own right what I'm doing is I've tidied up the edge a bit now I'm going to fold it I folded it on itself already oh, twice wow, says very true, Chloe. it really is it's the first step to starting to love yourself just like if you were a thumb sucker or a nail biter it's going to take you several weeks 
of actively correcting yourself every time you go to do it before it becomes habit. Well, we can become experts at looking for the negative and being negative and saying negative words. And the brain finds what you send it searching for. It really does. Right, now I folded it into a big block. This is going to be far more easier to work with because when I push on it, it's harder to fold that way. If it was a little thin thing and I did that, it would just consultina, zigzag, and you wouldn't get the right effect. So fold it into a nice big old chunk, like that. Then you're gonna put it down on your board and you're gonna press on the sides until you start to see it just starting to bow. Then what you're gonna do is put it up on its edge and pinching from the middle and pulling out and working along the whole thing. So it's now the same thickness as it was, but longer. And we do that again, down like that turn it over, down on that side, pinch from the middle, bringing it out. Charlie Starr said, years ago, I took ages to stop biting my nails. It didn't help, I liked that sour stuff that was meant to be anti-biting. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's, that's not good. Use furniture polish, it'll make you puke for days. So, little bit at a time, pushing down, pulling long lengthways. You really can bring your clay to form any shape you want, but a log is the best thing to get started with, and it's far more manageable to have it with a narrow fade. And just because you shrunk it down doesn't mean if you want it long again, because we are going to need it long again on certain bits, we can't bring it back out into its long form. So I will be showing you. It's amazing how not fragile your clay is, how it will respond to what you want from it. You just got to fiddle, be patient and not be scared of it. When I first started, my, again, my mind was good at learning from what I've been telling myself. I was no good at any sort of craft things. So I came into it with the belief I can't do this. So I was very nervous with it. And over the years, I found that everything is fixable and if you can't if it takes too much time to fix it and you can't be bothered you can use it for something else anyway all right we're almost there oh my arms are caning I am going to be getting my heat pad I've got this amazing thing evil spaz monkey Yvette her she has put me on to this plugging heat mat that it warms up there's like six different degree settings and it turns off after an hour so you can fall asleep on it and not cook yourself but it's so nice if you've got muscle pain. Right, pushing down, push down that way. I'm pretty much where I want to with this. Yay. There we go. Long, thin fade. Right, so we can start construction. First off, Let's get a tile. If you're a clayer, having just a load of bathroom tiles, plain white, are really useful. You can make your little side projects on it. They'll go in the oven and help 
keep the temperature constant it's a really good thing so swig a drink then i'm going to get into this <sighs> right since i got the brown out let's start with that top triangle so i want the fade along two sides like that so i'm gonna cut that looks about right where's my blade gone there we are like this now having a guide is really helpful so little side chunk put you to one side now we want dark fading into a triangle so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the the grip of sticking it down to be able to start manipulating it into a different shape. Now I want to make a triangle point so I want that to come down a bit. The Is dark. it going to make just the black triangle or the black and the... Just that triangle in the dark brown. Yeah. I will then border it in black once I got the fade shape right. So, starting to make a point, turn it over, go on the other side, flatten that bit, there we go. I'm pulling out the bottom to make it longer and coming in on the point at the top and I want to pull that dark down a lot more it's oops sorry that was a bit loud because I don't want the fade to run out halfway down that's looking better there we go now does it fit that's the shape so along that side it does but we're too tall and not long enough along there so this is where your picture is really useful because you're pretty much trying to line up the space and just keep pinching and fiddling and flip over and make sure the back looks right until you've got the bit that you want to fit in yep almost there sorry i'm over the top of it but i just gotta get it laying exactly where i want because you want it all to fit together properly there we go like that can you see that fits in it's slightly overhanging on the edge but at the end i'm going to trim the whole thing to the right shape anyway so first bit woo! now so we need to do the black border for it. Now, black is only along the top triangle bit. That is kept clear. So let's get one of our black strips. I think it'll be easier if I just tear this. I'm just gonna tear the paper so that I can just bring one over. Ooh, don't flip. See, even us that have been at it for ages still make mistakes. Scissors. Sorry, because I've put all the black strips on one bit of paper like a sensible person. That's harder to get one out and I don't want to damage the others because they are the fragilest thing when they're on that thing. There we go. Right, black strip. Now, I'm going to go... That's all right. Thank you for trying. When I have Wi-Fi issues, I grumble and pick up a book. It's a good way to get to see your family, though. If you just turn the Wi-Fi off, you'll see people you ain't seen in years. There we go. I'm sticking it in the middle. And I'm going to trim along the edge. 
get my blades up the right way there we go so like this that's all going to come away we will we can reuse this black now I'm going to trim this a little too large so that I make sure that even if I roll off center it's still got black on it but even if you mess up and there's a patch that hasn't got black you can always just pinch a bit off and patch it up as long as it's roughly the same thickness as the other it will look crisp still once you've reduced your cane so there we go black triangle now to trim it up to make sure that it's exactly the right size You can do this beforehand and measure it and then cut the black to fit exactly. But I have done that and then rolled it not completely straight and it sort of veered off to one side and I ended up patching anyway. So I find it easier to make it a bit bigger and trim down after. And since we're mainly dealing in straight lines, it's pretty simple. If you've got something that's quite curvy, you might want to have a craft knife like an exacto knife. There we go. Just trim the ends off. Like that. Brilliant. First piece completed. So that's that bit now let's move I keep that because that will be a good patching bit if um, I run out on my black but I can always put this straight back through the past machine and make another thin strip so I put that to one side put you back over there, out of the way. Right, what's the next colour? We are on to the yellow brown and it's going to be a long thin one. Right, now I really want to keep that out of the way and safe. The fade is um, all the way around. Now well, you could make up a jelly roll and stretch it but what I prefer to do with this is this, I'll show you. Cut a bit off, then I am going to make this bit a lot thinner because what I'm going to do is shrink it to half the thickness so it's half the thickness of that then flip it over and join them in and then put a bit at the end to make that round so I need this bit a lot lot thinner you just do like you did before from the middle to the edge pushing down now the other thing to bear in mind you want this to be the same thickness as that so the whole picture of that you're building up is exactly the same thickness But we can juggle that around once we got that shape together. Because again, once you've got it, you can compress and make it thicker. So I do love clay. It does seem to do some very awesome things. There is no hard and fast rule on how much you can shrink down your clay design. But if it's a complicated picture, the smaller it gets, it's the harder to see. And you will find that you can't, you end up completely losing bits. Right, like this. So that's a good start point to work from. Let's trim the ends up. Now, I'm going to take you off for the end. Then measure this I'm just got a little tape measure down the bottom so that's 12 so I'll cut at 6 
so I know that it's going to go into half. So line them up so we now have the fade down two sides and we can then I'm going to trim that a little shorter now if I just put this straight on like that there's going to be a break in the fade so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the dark just over so that it lays with the lighter colour in the middle can you see what I did there I didn't explain it properly but so when I show you up on the camera it's then got the fade twitch has glitched out eeps um, try, refreshing. try refreshing that can help so we've now got the dark in the semicircle that I want for along there so now we can start working on thickness and bringing it to the right shape so the first thing we need is to flatten that I know you got this big join line but trust me it will vanish by the end canes in their big form can look very scruffy and that's fine that's too thick so we are making it thinner because we've got to fit it in that gap and we need it to be that thickness so there we are that's better I'm just pushing along and as it's going up almost there you're still not thick enough see I'm just literally pushing where I want it to be and making it form what I want now still needs to be thinner 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 some people do really accurate measuring before they make anything so that the clay they literally will tell you thicknesses and length and width and breadth and all of that and I can't be bothered to do that I eyeball it and it it all works out in the end sometimes it don't turn out exactly as you planned but that's all right we are almost there for the thickness of that you can start to see both the black lines coming through the other sides there we are right so we are now there can you see that it nope still a little thinner needed so I've got to fit it in that space right there we go that works now this end I will trim it off right we've already got that black line in so we don't want to put another one because that'll make it double the thickness and it'll look a bit weird so what I'm going to do that joins even so if I put this in place then this comes in level with that and in like that then curves around like this pinch you up very thin up to the edge like this now remember I'm going to trim it so it doesn't really matter that it's not in it's overlapping that way a bit so with there now I got to cover that side and that side with black so we get our black back now I need a longer one <laughs> I go through so much grease proof paper luckily I recycle it so it's no biggie 
but it's the best thing to store and transport and everything your clay Here we go. Right. Next bit of black. Here we go. Right. So I want to put you down there. That's the long end. So you can start to see what I'm doing, how I'm building up a thick picture of that. And when you first start doing cane work, you'll find it hard to think in the 3D like that. I did anyway. Charlie Star says, mm. I'm back. Had to reboot iPad. Ah, uh, technology. Can be so useful and so annoying. A little bit over that way. There we go. Yeah, it's... It can be difficult to think in the 3D, but the more you do it, the more you get used to making just thick pictures. And it becomes, it can really become second nature. You can look at a design and just see how you're making that into a cane, even without drawing it out. But I like to draw out every time. Unless it's something as simple as a bullseye cane or a scowl. Right. There we go. That's on. Now, can you see I've got a little bit of a gap there that isn't covered? So I just take a bit of black. Some of the off cut. Whoop. Lay it down and cover in that space. There we are. That's why I keep these little scrappy bits because they can be really useful. If I had to roll out, here we go. If I had to roll out a whole nother bit of clay just to fill that gap in, I'd be really annoyed. So keep your scrappy bits of black until you've made your cane. So we are now that far. Put this to one side. And we're on to that dark red put my scraps of the brown to one side and again I'll be able to use that for other stuff so dark red that will be this one mm. it does eyeballing it does get easier over time the more you make something the more you're familiar with what it should look like in the stages and this is why I try not to cut out any of the stages. I try to make at least one example of each of them on screen. It can be very disheartening when you think you're doing something wrong and actually you, you're not, you're doing it right. You've just, um, they cut that bit out because it looks scruffy. Out of the tutorial well it can do that's fine but don't make people freak out thinking that this scruffy thing ain't needed right again I've got two sides with dark red so I've got to shrink this down and double it over like I did with the brown so right that's what I was saying before I started claying so I'll get back to this my stream next week it's gonna be my birthday stream so instead of going out for my birthday or anything like that I'm gonna stay in and clay with you guys I have no idea what I'm making yet any suggestions are welcome but I'm sure I'll work something out. Um, anyone who stays to my live stream on Twitch, I think, which way around was it? Let's have a quick look. Yes, Twitch, you go into the prize draw for this dragon. We're gonna screenshot the chat 
on who's logged in. You don't even have to be talking for you to appear in chat. We'll screenshot who is on Twitch at the end of next week and then do a random draw between them and the winner will get the dragon. If you're logged in on YouTube, you will get the same thing happening. Assuming we can get a list of chatters. And that's the prize for that. So pick which one you want on where you watch next week because you'll be into the draw for it. There are also draws for charms if you like and share my shop and there's a list on a previous YouTube video with um, all the with the things you need to do to win various charms as well. And if you spend a £10 in my um, Etsy shop until the beginning of February, you go into the prize draw for this trinket box which at the moment there is one person in so if hopefully i get <laughs> a few more purchases where it's hers cool. right again so he says i like the flower thank you thank you for d so we're roughly at 10 there let's go roughly at five there we go right because we're making that two-sided with the fade in the middle like we did on the brown there we go now we need to do the curve over the top so I do like that and attach it on you can literally just fold the whole thing over which can be easier but you don't have as tight control over that the shape of the curve if you just fold the thing in half and I have had it twisted up a bit right so we've got one side goes into a point so we need to squeeze that into a nice little sharp point like that and that flattens down into a bit of a diagonal wouldn't it be a lot easier for all jigsaw puzzles were this easy that you just literally made your pieces to fit? <laughs> It'd take me a whole lot less time to do a jigsaw puzzle, I know that. Right, let's put that into the right shape. Because again, we don't need to put the black line along one side because we've already got it from the other bit we've done. Here we go. It seems like a lot of work doing all this, but it is worth it because you do end up with a huge amount of cane at the end. We need to be. Sorry, I just realised it's not th as thick enough for to line up with the rest of it, and you don't want it to be sunken in. Like that, there we go. Fiddle, 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 and we get that. Right. So that needs to be in line. Now, if you find that you need it slightly thicker, you can. I'll show you with this. I wouldn't normally do that. I'd fiddle that into the right shape. But say I said, I'm like, hmm, that isn't enough. You can cut some more. shrink it down go through the process again like you did with that and then just stack it on top and then as you bring it out you can then the clay will work together that doesn't sound like a description that makes it much sense I'll show you but literally we're going through the same pro why have you got some brown there same process as before ha got you bringing it out thin like that now I'll show you what I was talking about with curving it over you can 
just do that but can you see it can crack and it's a little harder to make sure that it lays flat so that came across here sorry I've got my hands in the way for you there we go so we're back with that shape now I'll put that on top bring that across like that so it's exactly the same there we go and when you shrink you won't notice that it's two bits stacked on top of each other normally the smaller the cane the more precise you've got to make it the larger ones not so much so let's make bring you out to be the right shape there we are that's much better you fit in properly now so I'm going to join that by pushing that against there bringing the point out to where I want it line it up and we've got our next bit in so we now just got to back that in black like we did the rest of it the cool bit will be coming soon which is shrinking it down and then you get to work out how you want it to lay so whilst I'm doing this I'll tell you what I'm making this all for um, I've got a little table in my workroom and it's a plain 10 pound wooden cheap as chips little table I want to do something to make it a bit more interesting and I thought I will make a veneer for the top of it and I thought it was a good chance for me to show off both picture caning and complex caning now picture cane there are so many out there and I've seen people literally do things that look like old renaissance paintings like that level of detail it's, it's extraordinary um i've done cartoon dogs <laughs> and little cats and seahorses and things like that i tend to go more cartoony with my picture canes but you don't have to and you can get some very amazing level of detail and shading in I mean it may take you a year but you get there and the end result is stunning and they can be used for so many different things I've seen them Charlie Star says awesome idea for your table thank you the only slightly less awesome thing about it is that it um it's slightly too big to put the whole tabletop in the oven so I'm gonna have to make it in sections bake it and then glue it on with epoxy but there is a video in my Etsy not my Etsy in my YouTube showing how to glue with epoxy says, and the I tips of it my move sorted and then have my clay room set up it's it makes such a difference to have not only space but space that can remain set up so you're not literally setting it up every time because so i've found before i had this you can knacker yourself out just setting up your clay each time that it just means you ain't got energy to do as much clay work which ain't great so i took over a room that we were using just to store boxes and I've got shelves and I've got a desk and I've got some little drawers where I keep my scraps of clay and it's it's really civilised and pretty and I'm so happy with it. Charlie Star says, could you use cane slices like mosaic tiles and grout between them? You can. You can bake them and grout them in. You can use them raw and put them over... A bigger bowl push them on and then bake it and take the bowl off that is how I did let me just show you so you get to see my butterfly top 
that's how I did this bowl was I literally it went over the top of the bowl and I pushed them all on and smoothed them in and then baked it on the bowl and then took it off Charlie Star says that's cool you can I've also seen a roaring trade of people who make canes and then they sell them to nail bars you know the fake nails fingernails and they will bake little slices and bake them in or they will add them in to nail varnish designs raw and then just varnish over the top but the problem with that is nail varnish melts polymer clay so once it's baked it's not as bad but i wouldn't want to use it in my nail varnish personally but oh well it seems to be popular right we're back on to that brown again so that's this one all right doubling over and another thick wedge right your shape is slightly out and if i get that slightly out now it's going to be really out later so smudge it into the right shape there we go that's better right we're on to the next bit i'm sorry it's boring building this all up Oh, yeah, I have seen those little bugs and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we keep that screen on the backdrop because my husband keeps a lot of computer gaming stuff around. So you don't want to see that level of clutter behind us. There we go. That should be enough clay to fill that gap. So what I'm doing is I'm going to build up along all this top line and then I'll come down and do the next point. Some people start in the middle and work out. It really doesn't matter. And there are a lot of clayers who make canes all the time that really don't plan out beforehand. They just stick a load of shapes together form it into a triangle and see what you get at the end and you get a lot more of a nice surprise I suppose that way because often they work out really really well like you've done an amazing amount of planning and you haven't right I got a feeling I'm gonna need to make the I like them for crafting not nails yep but you can make your own don't you can buy them online but you don't need to they are easy enough because i'm showing you you can make your own design if you can't find them i mean yeah it's cheaper just to it's it's easier just to buy a sort of 99 pence couple of slices in a little pot but this way you can say it's yours Right, folding, I'm going to do folding to save time. Now, what I do is I make sure that I've got it pushed up against the board and then bring round, because they can, it can bow there and not lay right. So match that up there, bring that over like that. Almost there for that now. Now, bring it up thicker. Because don't forget, we need to get the height right. That's got a flat edge to it down the bottom there. So flatten out. That's got a flat edge to that. It's very much like a rectangle that bows out in the middle by the looks of it. So that sort of shape. Often when I make canes, I can spend an entire day fiddling around, just getting it to look how I want. And I've got to be honest, most of the time I don't end up sticking to the picture so exactly. I'm really not good at actually doing that. But they all end up looking great anyway. She's very, it's useful. I've got to admit, it really is. So, 
there we go like that bring that up there we are that'll do do you reckon we're almost there with that end line cool that's in so now we just gotta do the black around the outside edge get this little one back so how is everyone doing I've um, been talking on about me anyone had a decent week had anything exciting happen Ooh, comments looking bare no one had anything good happen this week <sighs> I want summer to come everyone will enjoy themselves far more post from a, someone watching on YouTube so we know that the cross posting is now working oh brilliant what's the YouTube reply um, Ro look at this dude although I'm not sure if he was posting a link or something but it's not being translated because links are banned except for mods ah. that's sorry if your link didn't share Even links are banned other than for mods apparently Evil Monkey Spaz says I'm okay knitting away while watching I've, I am amazed by the talent of Evie with her knitting. She is able just to knock things out and make it look far easier than I Funny. make my clay work look. Please use the um, username. Sorry, not using your username. So, 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 so. I've got to get into Party, Party Life Live says, I sold my stag painting. You did? Arty Hearty Life Life is an amazing painter and Charlie Star says the original question and Arty Hearty Life Life says within 24 hours of posting it online Evil Monkey says other than making shortbread and contact lens appointment that's about as exciting as it gets Shortbread is always exciting I love shortbread um, Arty Hearty Life Life I don't know if do you do live streams or youtube videos because if you don't you kind of should you really do some amazing stuff i've already been trying to talk um evil spasmarchy into showing off some of her knitting but that's not really her bag right now which is entirely reasonable but she's easily talented enough i'm very fortunate to have lots of talented friends and it, it is very inspiring Evil Monkey Spaz says, ooh, stag painting, that sounds awesome. And Charlie Star says, oh, I didn't realise it was you. E the, the thing is, that painting, it was a forest done in blues. And you showed it before the stag was in, and that was a beautiful painting. And then you put a stag in it, and now it's awesome. It seems to me that I have a thing about putting animal in art. They, they always crop up in my artwork. If you go through my shop... Pretty much everything includes something that, um, what have I done? Charlie <sighs> Star says, it was amazing. And Artifati Life Life says, I have a few vids of YouTube that channel. Bit there, obviously I need... that YouTube channel is the same as it is me. Yes, I do advise, do go check it out. She does some awesome stuff. Right. Helps if I put the black around a bit that I was meant I was intending to. Doesn't matter because I needed to put black around a bit that I did cover. But it was the other that's what happens when I work and I talk. <laughs> when I'm foggy. That's alright. It will still work out awesome. And I actually needed to put the black along there for what I'm planning. Isn't it good when your mistakes turn out right? Arty, Arty, life, life. Says, yeah, I remember you liked the elephant one. Yeah. I wish I could paint or draw. I have to admit, I have not had any success in either mediums thus far. And I have had people try to teach me, and it still comes out looking like a six-year-old did it. Which... 
I suppose actually it's better than some six-year-olds. What am I saying? I've seen some pretty incredible young artists out there. Arty Hearty Life says, my vids are rubbish so I'll get back into it soon. My art goes on Facebook and Insta. Anyway. Awesome. I will try and see if we can add a link to something of yours in the description along with tiny pandora right where are we up to now right we have this side aren't we that triangle's done that's done that's done we now have that very thin bit of brown and then we're on to the bright red You're coming along so nicely. Healthy, healthy life says, you wait till we get together, Carly. Um, I'll get you painting. Oh, you, I will produce something. I promise you, I will produce something. <laughs> Whether it's going to be anything that is um, worth much. It'll be worth much to me. And I know my husband will love it because I've created it. Because he's sweet like that. But... To say it's going to be anything more than on par with pretty much every other person on this planet's production, I don't think I can say more than that. It will be a standard picture that anyone could have produced. Whereas with the clay, even the first thing I made looked pretty spectacular. Which... Well, this is the thing. It's um, a mixed blessing to have a partner that loves everything you make because you can't keep it all because we're drowned. That's why I decided... Firstly, I decided to sell because I want my work to be out in the world, <clears throat> making many people happy if I can. And also, you end up drowning under your own artwork. Charlie Starr says, being able to express yourself in multiple ways is what counts. I, I don't know. I think clay will always be my main way of doing my expression in this world. Which I'm, is why I'm so glad polymer clay was invented. Because I can't afford to run a kiln. I just can't and traditional clay is so messy like ridiculously scruffy messy it's fun it smells lovely it smells like wet mud but you can't really do it very easily outside of a art workshop that you don't mind getting trashed and I kind of don't want to trash my work area as much I'm a bit more clean than that so I was just so bowled over with polymer clay I actually think it's more forgiving than normal clay it it's easier to fix up and make look like you want it to which is surprising because it's firmer but there we have it right that's that bit on <clears throat> we're getting there I'm very pleased with this I know it looks scruffy still but you wait you will see the transformation when I shrink it all down and start to use it right I need another strip of black cut off from the ones that I made and I think my birthday Tutorial is going to have to be me making this butterfly. Look at those edges. It does kind of look scruffish. What was that you were saying about talking to yourself? Yeah, <laughs> it's true. <clears throat> but I, I like the fact. I've seen people do their canes where it's precise all the way through and it's um, I enjoy it more when it looks like a 
scruffy thing and then you shrink it and it all goes amazing. Thank you. Well, I'm glad Fairy Hedgehog likes it particularly because it will be going on a table in her house. So that's always a bonus. There we go. Right. Next strip cut off. Right. Now, make sure you're coating the right bit. That's this end one. So get you at the start. Because I have done it before where I doubled, I put the black around every component. Don't do that because I don't want you sticking to the outside. And um, you end up with the black line in several different thicknesses and it doesn't look as crisp and neat. So it's worth not putting the black around all the individual components and then building it. Build your bits and put the black edges around as you work. It's better. Unless you're very good at being organised, which I'm not. I'm scatty. I've al you've already witnessed me putting black around a bit, an edge that I didn't even work on that time. So, <laughs> yeah. But it all works out. There we go. Right, we're all in. That's that bit. So black can go to the other side. And you do find that you get quicker at it as you go. So it took me a lot longer to do that first triangle than it is for me to do some of the other bits. So I'm just getting some tissue, give my hands a wipe, give the blade a wipe because there's a bit of black going on around here. The hedgehog says, if this is disorganised, then I hate to think of I have seen some very awesome clayers with the most spectacularly messy work area. And it's easy to do because by the time you've finished a project, you're too knackered to clear up, really. You say to yourself, I'll do that tomorrow. And then you don't do it tomorrow because who wants to go back and just clear up rather than get on with the project? There's, you'll get to the stage where you don't actually want to do your work because you've got no space to work in without not just a little clear up, just the most amazingly big clear up ever so i force myself to clear up okay. after every project except for every wednesday i go straight down for dinner after i finish and then go to bed hedgehog says i have seen an awesome player too hmm <laughs> thank you i'm not even where i want to be i'm really enjoying the process this isn't negative talking because i love where i am Every bit is still better than the piece before, but I've, again with that, apparently gravity don't like us today and our screen likes to fall down. Thank you gravity, I love you sometimes. Cause of half the mischief on this planet, I'm sure of it. Oops, some of the black folded over there and was going to double up if I haven't. Sorry, I'm just doing a bit of straightening there. What happened was that edge rolled back like that. So I was just tapping it back down so that it's even thickness again. Put you back in place. Right, we're on to that bright red triangle. Now, I'm going to get out a set of tools that I got recently. Two seconds. They're called cane. Oh, sorry. Oh, I didn't think I was going to use these. It's called a cane bender. They come in sets of squares and round the little plastic sticks. And what you can do is you can use them to push the shape into your cane so that it's fitting right. Hearty hearty life alive says, mm, not fond of gravity myself. Down just seems so far away these days. Doesn't it? 
Um, it's the result of pretty much every single thing that gets broken on this planet. I mean, if we didn't have gravity, I'm sure we'd have less breakages by a long way. Yeah, but I get very few things broken from friction. I get a whole lot because it's been dropped. There we go, like this. And then I fold that back up. That's it. That didn't have the right angle that I needed. So I pushed along that edge and then I brought that up. So there needs to be a square going to fit in there. Right, that's better. That's the right shape. But anything you've got that's got a rounded edge and a squared edge are useful for when you're cane working. So you can just push your pieces into the shape you want. And sometimes it can make things so much easier. You can really end up with a hassle trying to do it with you, trying to push in a right angle with your fingers. Charlie it doesn't Stasis. work. Charlie Stasis floor being too far away is an issue for me. Not too hard to match this. It's when it jumps up to greet you. Yeah. It's when it jumps up to greet you. Evil Monkey's Past says, I'm thankful for gravity. I've heard the stories about um, what's it, eight UM gases in space that linger and put me off space exploration. And Charlie says, he. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe a little oh, less. Uh, Maybe gas. not none um, at all. Um, gases in space. <laughs> I would say no gravity would be a problem. A little bit, a little bit less would be useful though. That's all I'm saying. That life would be easier, and it's not really the drop that's the problem. It's the last sort of centimeter as you touch the floor that's the problem. He's my lovely admin husband is used to my typing, so he's fine with all sorts. Evil monkey spares suggests optional gravity switches. I bet that will happen. In the future when they finally make artificial, artificial environments you will be able to pick your gravity. Uh, if you think about it, in the 80s, 2019 and 2020 were the dates of the future in most of the sci-fi. And if you have a look at what they got us wearing, we're a little bit out. Our technology is not there in the mainstream i don't know about in military projects or anything like that but the mainstream we have not got shoes that self tie and hoverboards that actually fly properly and that sort of stuff it's interesting to see what the people in the past thought we would have right now because it ain't what we got put it that way Wouldn't it be good if when you dropped something you had a whole minute before it landed? Oh, that would be amazing. You Charlie Star says, a little switch you can control your own personal gravity would be cool. It would, it would. One day. I mean, if you go in there, you could also do pre um, opposable toes so that you could catch with your feet. You haven't got to bend down. Arty Hearty Life says, and if boobs would, would stay up. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. The age old boob issue. One that I've had all sorts of interesting issues with because I've got fibro. Wearing a bra is the most painful torture ever. I mean, I. If people felt what I felt, it would be illegal to wear bras. But every everyone's got an issue with nipples. Even though every guy's got nipples. These are this is um you know, it's a mammalian thing. But here we have it. 
I, I've just learned to ignore it. I'm fed up with all that stuff. And I'm not going to put myself through torture just because someone can't handle it all. But, yeah, there we go. I'm one of those people. Those faultless people who make men feel, feel uncomfortable because you're not completely trust. Meh. Right. We are a lot further along than I even hoped by this point. Even at what's the time looking like? Really? 15 minutes to 7? That's ridiculous. That, that's the thing about clay. It goes... It, it takes your time very quickly. I better rush along and get this done or I won't be able to do the reduction on screen and I want to show you all that because that's where the magic lies. So, just a little bit needed. All the time normally is in making the cane. This bit can be a long old process. And again, you can take a day on it. It's not unnormal. Fairy Hedgehog says, ooh, that's pretty. Yeah, it's getting there. It really is. I'm very pleased. There we are, there we are. That's on, right. I just got with the plan. We are there with it. Charlie Star says, anything you enjoy tends to pass so quickly, I wish it was the other way around. It's why I got into crafting. I have enough health problems that I need to actually distract myself or I would end up constantly thinking about how my body feels and you end up feeling even worse because your brain finds what you send it looking for so it notices suddenly that everything hurts whereas if you're busy you don't notice that things are hurting you do you do when you stop believe me but beforehand it's pretty good sorry we've got people beeping outside that's nice right that little we got a little square coming up now the best thing for me to do is to show you how to do a jelly roll at this stage so how am I gonna do this it's that way isn't it you bring it this back to a longer sheet use your rolling pin with the fade at one end going through the middle so one colour at the top, one colour at the bottom. Even Monkey Spaz says, I'm loving the colour mix with this. Yep. It's my... When my husband picked out stone as the colour for the walls in this room, i I got to be honest, I was against it. It looked awful in the can. It looked very, very dingy once we got it on the wall in an empty room. And then we put once it dried it dried lighter and once the furniture is in it looks awesome so you're back to your faded sheet that you had before you made it all up and what we're going to do is you pick which side you want in the middle and we're going to go light, light in the middle to dark on the outside and you literally just roll it up hence the roll part of the jelly roll so you're back to dark on the outside that in the middle and we're going to turn that into a little square to go in there I do like working with autumn colours I made a I got a cat that was a sort of china ornament china stone no it was a bit heavier than china sort of earthenware type stonish black cat ornament and the shape of it was beautiful as a sphinx cat but it was just plain black so I covered it in canes like what I'm making here I did about 15 different ones 
and I will show you next week I will bring it up and I think it makes such a difference the other reason why I covered it like that was my mother-in-law actually owns the same statue and I live with her because her and my father-in-law because my health isn't good enough for me to live on my own with my husband so she helps me out a lot during the day which I'm forever grateful for I don't think I'd be doing clay if I run my own place. I just wouldn't have the energy to do both. Charlie Star says he is a beautiful kitty too. Thank you. But I'm on the lookout round charity shops for a good shaped statue that I can do another cover of live on here because I wasn't streaming back when I made that. Says she's very lucky to have you living with her. Oh, thank you. That whole thing about you not getting on with your mother in law is a foregone conclusion. That ain't true. Me and my mother in law are awesome tight. She is a friend, not just family. But it's it's funny how people assume that you you use that title and they go, Oh, it's your mother in law, is it? I'm like, Yeah. Hearty Hearty Life says she sounds like a diamond. Yeah, I'm very lucky. You get to pick your husband, you don't get to pick his family. And that's I'm I'm really lucky. I've got a brother in law who is a bit of a genius and also massive level of charisma and in and personality. Charlie says she's so. amazingly kind, caring and creative woman. Yeah, she is. She she can crochet amazing stuff. I she tried to teach me once. I'm I gotta say the resulting knot was slightly prettier than my normal knots in wool, but it wasn't crochet. It was it was a mess. Right, let's put this to one side. We've got our swearing already. You see why this plan is so useful to have? But if you don't write it out, even if you don't stick to it properly in the end result, you still really need to plan out what you're doing. So we've got... 4D says, can I borrow your mother-in-law for a few days? She's lovely. <laughs> yeah you know we just pass her out like you know like a rented hoover <laughs> Artie, Artie says lol and her hedgehog says ruffles oh. uh, um, it's good <laughs> delay slightly Even yeah. Says, I will second any compliment directed at Fairy Hedgehog to one of my favourite people. Thank you. Directed I agree. Ha ha ha. And uh, Paul D has lots of laughing smileys. This is the opposite of a roast, isn't it? Where you sit there and compliment someone unexpectedly rather than slagging them off. I would just roll in pin a bit of pink straight into the colour I'm working with. Right, I'm making... Can you see in the middle there are some squares? So I'm making... Down a bit? Here? Yeah. There you go. Four, four squares in the middle. That's what I'm doing now to the other three. Evil Monkey Spaz says, New job description. Very hedgehog renter mowing law. Do you know what? I read a news article where you can rent a mum... For people who have lost their mum and there's a real big take up on people who are in the gay, lesbian, transsexual, that sort of thing. LGBT. LGBT, that's what I was looking for. Um, where they, they've got events where their family need to turn up and they've got family who disown them. So they, they rent a mum. And 
these women they are earning okay at it but they also are helping people and the service you get they come round they'll do your washing up they'll sit there and you can have you talk like parent and child they pretend they literally just act like you're their kid how's your day love lovely to see you big hugs all that and yeah rent a mum i think it's a great idea because there are times in life that a parent not being there is a problem the prob the only thing is you've got to make sure that you rent the same mum to each occasion or people get confused other than that as long as they don't quit you're golden charlie star says how old do you have to be to rent a monologue uh, 4d says i'll take a mum dad brother or sister fairy hedgehog says you offering charlie star and charlie says it sounds like an awesome job isn't it though you're helping people and you're supporting them and they're giving them family to be around I think when when I read the article there were people doing it that's a ridiculous idea blah 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 and I was like what that's not it's it's awesome I don't see the problem maybe you don't rent a mum until your child that it's the estranged mother that, that she's never met that's the wrong way to use it but to have it just to have you feel better and have that mother support for a bit for a couple of hours a month or for an occasion where you don't really want to explain to everyone oh man it's a good idea Right, we are we've done the next cube. Now I haven't they're not looking entirely perfect. The swell it's not like a band of dark colour with a light colour on the inside only. There's a as you can see it's mixing in a little, but it will look really cool at the end result. So my big tip for cane making have an idea of what you want but don't be so hung up on it that if it don't go exactly the way you want keep going with it because you'll be surprised your end result will look pretty good normally 4d says it's a good idea for some people without family it's a nice idea i don't know if I'd, I'd sign up myself but it's a good idea Fred mm. says it is a good idea i bet it's quite restorative too if you've never had the support of a parent Forty says, "Yep, yep," and you, you can read, you can get into the role play. It's not just a. They do do that. I'll come along to a wedding or whatever or graduation, so you're pretending to other people, but just having the psychology of someone going to come into your house for a bit and treat you like their child talk to you like their child neither of you would acknowledge that they're not that that's not the case it can be very therapeutic just to just to pretend for a bit if you ain't got it i mean some of the things that people adults role play in in this world that seems like a whole lot more um wholesome than some of them i mean i being careful because this is i don't want to get in trouble with youtube i'll just leave it at that saying it's not exactly harming anyone charlie star says or well, for those who want kids but can't for whatever reason being part of the time mum would be pretty cool or parents should i say and fairy hedgehog says i hadn't thought of that well the woman who the article was written about who was doing the job how she got into it her son came out as gay. She was like, brilliant, I've got a gay son, that's awesome. Carried on being awesome mum. And his friendship group, he ended up, as you do, meeting a lot of people with like-minded situations. And so he ended up with quite a few gay friends. And they're, quite a lot of them weren't so fortunate. Their parents were like, nope. I, I 
this only blah 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 and one of them had an event and said would you mind coming along to it and pretending to be my mum so I haven't got to answer all these questions and she was like okay and others were like oh you do that can I can you do that for me and thus a business was born and I'm like sounds like a really good idea la, 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 la. right we've got that stick to do there next so it's all building up well now once this shrinks down once you tessellate it up you will find that it makes like a flower type shape that's my hope but you gotta make sure that you reduce it right so that you don't um there's a lot of pitfalls with reducing so i will go into that even if we overrun a bit which we might by the looks of it i know i tend to do a hard line of seven o'clock but i think this one might need to go on a bit later sorry guys it's worth it in the end i promise because the reduction process is very very pretty but i do want to finish up right i will check <coughs> whether james minds um i think i'm gonna end up going over seven o'clock okay. is that all right Just with you remember that i have to leave at about yes nine or something. oh it's not gonna take me till then <laughs> yeah but we still have i still have to have dinner yeah, no, I don't think it will overrun very much because I've only got to make that bit and reduce. And then we, I am there, but I want to reduce on camera. So I'll just, I'll be quick. Quick, 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 quick. But you can see why you go, I just, I'll just do an hour's claying and then you blink and daylight's gone and it's night time and you've been there all day it's deceptively easy to get lost in your craft which is good and bad but I'm doing patching in because it didn't lay right. Okay. Gordy says I got a fly. Not literally. That'd be cool. But I'll see you soon. See uh, you later. I would. Star says bye, Gordy. Bye bye. Have a good week, Gordy, and I'll probably catch up with you soon. You should be able to see the reduction process on the YouTube video if you need to go. if you're interested right one two three that needs to come over like this goes like that right that goes in like this hmm what way up i'm not gonna double that over for because of it's gonna look wrong if i don't isn't it so reduce double it over put it in I can't scrimp on this now it's too pretty for me to do so what I might do though is I could just fill up and flatten it and take that edge off make it just a little less of a complex one that might be worthwhile what do you reckon take that make it into the triangle there and veer away from the plan or stick to the plan and make it a longer video what's your votes guys because both I can do both I, I could do either rather what have we got why not yeah okay I will 
make it a less complicated one and make the video shorter so let's put you in there and we'll just fill in some gaps with some other colours because we're not really that far off anyway so we're sort of there so what I'll do is I'll yeah I'll patch in and your choice but will you be happy with the result of your choice that's I very good I will be I'm sure I think yeah I think I can do this do a quick on the fly changeover and I think I will be able to make it so that I'm happy with it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that into a long stick along there and then put a little triangle in that corner and then it'll be done now the colors that I'm using here I selected because they are the colours that are in a rug that's on the floor which is a good thing about making it yourself you can make it the colour that you want so let's go a bit longer a bit squarer so I needed to make sure I included the cream because it would tie into the other stuff right I forgot to black edge that because that would look really really weird if I I'm just putting a black edge on along that side I do love my tissue blades that's what this kind of knife is called a tissue blade for anyone who doesn't know and you can do clay and technically with just a normal craft knife but I would be so sad I would it would just not be right for me I'm sure I do have a really good exacto knife that my husband bought me back when I started and I still don't use it as much as I use my tissue blade and I do love it off I get less talkative when I end up on a rush that's all right because we're almost done now so this one goes in along here like this let's make it so that you lay right there we go along like that I'll stick a triangle of clay into that gap there strip it with black and then we're sorted right what colour should I do probably dark brown this let's do a little right so when you see something made out of a cane you can see now that the whole huge amount of work has gone into it so it may look simple but it's kind of it is it's just time consuming does, i know some very hedge your asks, does every cane take this long if you got paid a fair hourly rate no one would ever afford anything you make making something like a cane like this where it's just a stick of colour with a colour wrap around it that's two seconds it depends complex canes where it's got a lot of different designs in it they take a long time I know someone who spends weeks on theirs and but you end up because you're making a big amount you end up with a lot over so you can store it and use it in other projects I mean it's it can dry out so you have got that as a risk 
but you can do it. Right, that needs to go into a point. Let's go across here into a point. I'm just going to push that into that gap like that to make the end of it. But you can see why there are people who this is their skill set. They focus on nothing but cane work because it can take a long time to learn how to get quick and reasonable at it. There we go. That looks right. That looks right. So just, there we go. Triangle. Just got to put a bit of black across the edge there. And then we are ready to do reduction, which is awesome. Helps if I had the blade up the right way, but I wasn't pushing on the I top then. That's why the industrial revolution of mass production took over. Yeah, but people want unique, one of the one of the kind things. They just don't want to pay for them. It's because you don't, there's a culture of not thinking about where things have come from since we've got some pretty awful places that people work. Well, that's all well and good until you're trying to account for making someone actually have a livable wage, which is... Um, not easy to do when you're charging everything for a pound and it's kind of hypocritical of me because I also go into the pound shop and do that sort of stuff that and don't want to think that anyone from that shop who in the production line had a less than fair deal but I'm not sure how you do it all for a quid and give everyone a fair deal so. Hearty Hearty Life says, but now that so much more is automated, people have more time to get into creativity. Yeah, but the weird thing is, a lot of the automated stuff that's being developed is designed to look handmade and look like it was human created. They're getting better and better at faking that sort of thing. It's um, kind of scary. I mean... If you listen to some of the voice automations they've got now, it's it, they're really, really hard to tell the difference. And I don't think art is safe. I think we're going to get it so that songs are being written by computers and clay work and all this sort of stuff. It's going to be easy enough for them to do. Right. On to reduction. Now... Generally, you let, let your clay sit for a bit if it's very warm. The reason why I'm putting it on tiles is because I want the whole of the design to pull up. And when you push the outside, it doesn't go at the same level as the middle. Because physics. So far they are hysterically bad and unmakeable. Give them a while though. What I'm doing, so it's wedged between the two bits of tile, like that. Now, I am pushing with my fingers in a line in the middle, okay? I'm pushing them together so that the clay starts to come up like that and you keep going round and round and round and pushing try to keep your pressure as even as possible now i've never met anyone that didn't have some of their clay distort at either ends of the cane where it didn't come up evenly that is just the thing Yep, I did. I did that. So can you see it's now a bit thicker. Yep. You will 
see pretty shortly that the tiles are going to get quite a bit far apart let's check I've still got the same yep I'm not distorting its shape too much let's get the points pushed in a bit and this is a lot of arm work and there's not a lot of you can do to really make it easier on yourself I mean you can use rolling pins in the gaps you can put it on its side and roll it and not worry about putting the tiles on each side but you will lose a lot more clay to distortion that way but it's it's a relatively quick thing to reduce down can you see already we're still thicker again it really is coming up make sure your towel's stuck down properly and they do sell end caps so it's basically little um, plastic towels to use instead of the ceramics but they're good enough and they're often see-through but I use my ceramic tiles for so many things and they work just as well as the see-through plastic ones right. we're getting there now see we're already thicker again we're getting there would it be easier if you used something see-through not really because you're doing it by fill anyway you can you do have I do have them what I got was um, little glass coasters Definitely. sorry little glass see-through coasters but they're smaller than the tiles that I got and that's a very big triangle so what I might do is once it's down to the side if you want now it's down a bit I can Put it onto the glass ones for you yeah let's transfer it over to the glass ones can you see where if it's not stuck on the towel these bits are coming up but the center isn't that's why you've got to make sure you really are firmly pressed down onto your towel because the vacuum will pull the middle up for you if it's stuck down firmly there you are you guys can see better right so hands either side push in make sure the towel doesn't lift Hearty Hearty Life says milk bottle caps or Pringle lids work well very hedgehog says interesting neat they do but you've really got to have a small cane to start with if you're making one of these big old chunks of cane your Pringles lid is not going to cover it and then you need actual glass tiles or drinks coasters or plate coasters right doesn't matter so much if the shape distorts out at this stage you get it back at a later point because we are going to shrink it down now flipping it over so that because you're more likely to push on the bottom than you are on the top because you've got a table to rest on so it's good to give it a quick flip over now and then It's already coming up it looks scruffy I know it really does but we will it will emerge beautiful so we're going to shrink this down pretty small from the middle always work from the middle outwards 
what I mean that bit then out because that's the, the middle bit is the bit you're going to have the least distortion so have the most usable clay oh my arms are going to be wrecked tomorrow probably a good thing I'm not doing the butterfly today there we go it's coming up mine always wind up looking round and then I've got to flatten them out every time I try and reduce squares and triangles I still end up with a circular reduction it's not such a problem because you can then flatten the sides out at the end you just got to make sure that you get them lined up right but we're getting there it's coming into a stick flip can you see already the middle is sunken down the sides are wanting to come up so that's what distorts the cane so the bits where that's happened with you're going to find the picture isn't as even as you made it but along the middle it won't it'll be fine glass coasters reduce it and if you're better at using them than I am you get a very you get a lot less of it happening but it doesn't make it so that the whole thing's perfect you still have to cut off the ends but those end bits can really look pretty in their own right I'll show you what I mean right once I have it reduced down to the size I want how small does it need to be it, for a hedge of as small as you want it to be is the honest answer yep that's the side yet yeah. um, I want mine to go down to about that size so that I can really use it to tessellate around the edge properly but there are some who leave them very big it's all down to your own tastes now it's going to be easier now I can get the palms of my hands in there better here we go we're on to the easy a bit flip right can you see I'm pulling from the middle and I'm pulling up you can squish the edges in it towards the end but it's the middle that you're really valuing because that's the bit that's going to look the best right I think I can take these off the coasters I've saved as much as I'm going to save on those ends so then I'm going to bring them up There we go, we're getting that. So we're almost there size wise. And like I said, there are people that do this all the time. This is the only thing they do you don't want to twist it too much you've got to make sure the color lines are laying straight because any twist that you put in the clay stick will go through to the image which you don't want it will be another way you can warp it there we go right the reveal the big reveal right let's chop some off look at that 
Pardon, we need to study something. But See? Now I'm going to reform it back into its triangle. But though that's it tidy, up in the distorted area, you still have pretty looking things. They've just not got all the colours in that you wanted and you can what still use it. <laughs> Isn't it though? It's the closest thing to magic that I can do. Which is why I wanted to include it on. So you can still use these end bits. Don't throw them away. You just make a different thing out of it. So I'm going to pinch this into a triangle along that dark line there with the red on the side then I will we can start planning some tessellation right for want of time I do that off camera let's do a small bit now like that and push you down like that bring you back into a triangle like this so Thank you. Right, we're now back in a triangle again, like that. So we can then start fiddling around with tessellation ideas. So let's chop some slices off and I'll show you what I mean. So let's get a towel. Can you zoom in, techie guy? Of course I can. Thank you. To this towel. Any further? Yes, because we're trying to see the design on it. Brilliant. Perfect. So, we can... Very Hedgehog says, do you bake it as separate tiles? I don't. I will get into that in a bit maybe another episode actually looking at the time but you start to line up one color you can then so that's one option like that or we can flower petals. Sorry, very hedgehog said. Cool. Take this apart. We can then match up different line. Whoop, here one, like this. So we could then go let's go that that edge. Hmm. Like this, so the. Very hedgehog says, I love that. Beautiful. Hmm. There we go. Way. That way around, isn't it? Mm, is it? Right. You fiddle around. There we go, that's what I'm trying for. With, with it until you get that's it there there are several options so that's the oh, next that's one is oops there we go there we go can you see I've put it so that the white edge is now in the middle and the pink and that's a star yeah there should be several different ways you can tessellate on a triangle obviously you've got three different edges that you could put and they each come out of a different design so and it goes all the way through so pick which one you like the most as your end design and then you literally make lots of them and then they all go next to each other. I will do a video 
on how to um, smooth them out and make it into a big sheet but I don't think that should be today to be honest because got a whole lot of time been taken so yes first came down with this I hope you all have a really good week and next week I will do the butterfly one to show off okay but I hope you guys get caning if you make any good canes yourself do share them in the comments I'd love to see okay good luck everyone bye